Hi everybody, this is Pastor Jed, and again, this is another edition of my video blog, Apologetics and Prophecy, where we look at all things prophecy, but through an apologetic lens, meaning that we want to make sure that everything that we look at when we talk about prophecy is, is biblically based, and it is solid. And so we look at these things at, from an apologetic standpoint. So, as you know, we are going through right now, through a study through the book of Ezekiel, of the prophetic timeline according to Ezekiel. And right now we are looking at a future event that is very soon on the horizon, that is being talked about a lot in prophecy circles and online. And we want to make sure that we understand it and that we take it uh, expositionally out of the Bible. And we're not looking at things and putting events that we see into the Bible and, and coming up with ideas that might not necessarily be biblical. And so we're taking bite-sized chunks of it out. And as we've been, this is part, this is part six. And this is, um, we looked at the land. Of course, the first thing that we saw was prophecy that's already been fulfilled. And that was back in the, the, the late 20th, the, the early uh, night, the late 19th century into the early 20th century with the Balfour Declaration and the return of the Zionists, that the land was preparing herself for the return of the, of the Jewish people, of her people. And we see that mentioned in Ezekiel 36. Of course, then we saw the people being brought back into the land, and we saw that at the end of World War II when the captives were taken that were the, 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 the people from the, the camps, from the Nazi camps, were brought to Israel on boats. And as we see them coming off the boats, the vivid pictures that we saw, that it looked just like the picture of the dry bones being, um, being brought back to life again. And so 37, and then we saw that in the end of 37, that the nation that comes into the land would be a secular nation that would be there basically in unbelief. Most of the Jews that live there today are not there by unbelief, but it's God's purpose to bring them back into the land to fulfill uh, promises that he has for them that are coming in the future. And of course, then we see this um, invasion that's going to come that has not yet happened. The other two, the other three parts that we had are all fulfilled prophecies that have been fulfilled. But yet now we go into the future, which is in the near future, and we talk about this this invasion of you know Ezekiel 38 and 39, of course. So we took the time to look at the players. And of course, the players, the main player is Russia, and that Gog is actually the leader of Magog. And um, that Magog, we can know from secular history, from the Table of Nations, from the, 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 the birth of the Scythian people, that it is the Russian people. Remember, the names that are in the Bible of the Table of Nations speak of a geographic area. Even though the nations have changed, the family trees have changed, but the geographic location is what they're talking about. And so Magog is Russia. And so we saw... Um, Last week, we looked at the alliance, and of course, we looked at those names and the geographic areas that take them to tell us that it's Russia, Turkey, Iran, Libya, and Sudan. And so we know that there's going to be an alliance of these nations that circle around Israel from the distance. They're all going to gather together, and their armies are going to come in and, 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 and begin to attack Israel. But today, we're going to look at the reason. Why are they doing this? And we know from the beginning of Ezekiel 38 that it's God's plan. He's putting a hook in their mouth. They think they're doing this on their own. They're making the decision to do this, but it's God that is moving in their hearts for a reason. But we're going to look at their reason. Why are they doing it? And so we're going to pick it up in Ezekiel 38, and we're starting in verse 7. And it says, prepare yourself, speaking to Gog and this alliance of nations, the Lord is speaking through the prophet Ezekiel, saying, Prepare yourself and be ready, you and all your companies that are gathered about you, and be a guard for them. After many days you will be visited. In the later years you will come into the land of those brought back from the sword and gathered from many people on the mountains of Israel, which had long been desolate. They are brought out, they were brought out 
of the nations, and now all of them dwell safely. That is true. That is the fulfillment. We already saw that through 36 and 37. The Israelites are there safely. They do not need to put fences around their cities anymore. Just because they have a wall around their nation doesn't mean that the nation itself isn't safe. They are very safe. Even when missiles get launched into Israel nowadays, you never really hear maybe one person gets killed out of 200 missiles. So they dwell safely. And you go there and they, it's one, of, and if you ever go and visit Jerusalem, when you're there, you will feel safe. You, it, it's a very, I, I feel safer in Jerusalem than I would walking around South Sacramento. So it, it just goes to show you that this scripture is fulfilled. They have come back. The land has been desolate. It's obvious that it's for the later days. So we know we're standing on solid ground biblically when we're talking about this being a future event that is very near in the future. And so we, it moves on. It says, you will ascend this alliance of nations coming like a storm, covering the land like a cloud, you and all your troops and many peoples with you. So this is a massive alliance of, of nations that are, are fundamental Islamic Shiite based nations that are going to come and they're just going to come and, and, and just with all of their armies, they're going to gather together and that's it. We're going to invade Israel. You know, today we hear the, the Iranians, mar you know, yelling, you know, they, they want death to Israel. They want to wipe them off the map. They want to push them into the ocean. Well, this is when they're going to actually act on those things that they're saying. And so, thus says the Lord God in verse 10, On that day it shall come to pass that thoughts will arise in your mind. And you will make an evil plan. So God's already telling him, this is what's going to happen. This is why you're going to do this, Gog. Speaking to the leader of Russia, who's going to be the head of this alliance of nations, an evil thought's going to come into his mind. And you will say, you will say, I will go up against a land of unwalled villages. I will go to a peaceful people who dwell safely. All of them dwelling without walls and having neither bars nor gates to take plunder and to take booty. Now, I like the King James version that says spoil, and we'll talk about that in just a minute, because he says to take plunder, to take booty, to stretch out your hand against the waste places that are again inhabited, and against a people gathered from the nations who have acquired livestock and goods who dwell in the midst of the land. So the, the reason why it would be apropos to use the word spoil, because if you take the SP off a of spoil, you have oil. And you need to understand that that is the reason. Right now, we see Russia settled in Syria, making uh, alliances and, and showing a heavy hand in the Middle East and in the politics of the Middle East. And the reason being is because we're about ready to have a, 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 a trade war, or not really a trade war, but just a war for energy. Energy is the most important thing that this planet needs. And oil and natural gas are two of the most important things that the Western civilization needs and the developing third world nations that are starting to rise up. And, and, and the tensions are happening because we've had a major control in Saudi Arabia with the Sunni nations with, with a lot of control over oil. And in the, in recently, um, the United States has, has become the leader in the world of producing oil. Before that, the second nation to the Middle East to produce oil was Russia. And Russia also supplies Europe with natural gas. And so they, right now, with the decreasing, the, the, the flood of product on the, on, on, the, on the market, the price being deflated, you know, when oil was 80 to to $100 a barrel, Russia was doing great. Their economy was doing great. But now that it's down around 60, between 40 and 60, it's hard for them. They aren't making the kind of money. So they need to expand their, their ability and their tentacles into the realm of energy because that's where their money is. That's where their economy and their lifeblood is. And so with us now being a major player in the energy market, Russia has to compete with us. And they know that the, 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 the main place is the Middle East. The Middle East is where all the oil is being produced. It's where it's, 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 the, it's, the, it's the lifeblood of energy for the world at this moment. And so something amazing's happened in the recent years, over the last just few years, and it's growing. 
that there has been found vast oil reserves in the nation of Israel. They have now access to more natural gas than, 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 than anybody in the area. And they've already made deals to send pipelines to Cyprus and then eventually over to Europe. And President Trump has stepped in and, and, and put money in and put, put his skin in the game on this, this project to take oil from Russia and move it from Israel over to Europe. So now Russia's been threatened. Now Russia has a hook in its jaw. Now this Gog, which could be Vladimir Putin at this moment, or it could be another leader that rises up after him, we do not know. But it's a possibility, it could happen at any moment, that they could decide that, you know what, if we control Israel, we will now have control of the oil and gas and energy for the whole Europe and Western, Western nations and would boot us out of the way. And so you can see that that's the plan that God is going to make Gog have in his evil thought in his mind to invade Israel. See, 10 to 15 years ago, this would have been an impossibility because, I mean, you know, Israel had agriculture and technology and a lot of good things going for them and a great economy, but they didn't have a resource that would cause Russia to want to invade it. Of course, the is Islam, they want to destroy them, but Russia is doing it for monetary gain, for power. And so we see this happening. So today, can we see the reason for this Gog, this leader of Russia, to want to come into Israel to take a spoil? Yes, we do. And so that tells us that we are on the cusp of the last days. If we can continue reading 14 to 17, it says, Therefore, son of man, prophesy and say to Gog, this leader of Russia, Thus says the Lord God, on that day when my people Israel dwell safety, will you not know it? You'll know it, right? He says, then you will come from your place out of the far north, which would be Russia, and you and many people with you, this alliance of nations, all of them riding on horses, a great company and mighty army. You will come up against my people Israel like a cloud, to cover the land, and it will be in the later days, the last days, that I will bring you against my land, so that the nations may know me when I am hollowed in you. So we're going to see later on as we go through this, the what happened. And so, you know, the reason God is the purpose for God. We'll talk about the purpose on a later, a later episode. Thus says the Lord God, are you he of whom I have spoken in former days? By my servant, the prophets of Israel, who prophesied for years in those days that I would bring you against them? It says, are you he? Are you he? God, today. That would be Vladimir Putin. Leader of Russia. Dictator, basically. Cruel, evil individual whose, whose quest for power and, and, and money and notoriety has fueled his his sustaining ability to stay the leader of that nation. And you have to understand, he's ex-KGB. He's from the old guard. And he knows the tricks of, 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 the, of live, ruling the way they used to rule back in the time of communism. And so we see that God is saying today to the leader of this coalition, are you he? Are you the one? You'll know it because you'll see Israel as just pickings for your power play of energy, to, uh, uh, the energy monopoly that you want to control in the world. And it's, it's not world domination like we used to think that you had to take the land. No, whoever controls the oil controls the people. And so that's the way it is today. We're dependent on it. And we see that being used by God to bring about this plan that's going to usher in the last day scenario, the rapture of the church, the tribulation period, all of these things we see beginning to take place now. And so that tells us that we need to be ready. Now, I want to focus on one verse and then I'm going to leave you. And this is, we've always had people talking about, you know, I, I've heard all kinds of crazy things about America being in the Bible in codes and, you know, how you could you could take a map of the promised land over the, 
or the tabernacle and lay it over the United States of America and it fits perfectly and all these things like the United States is, is in the Bible, but it's not. It's not. We are considered a Gentile nation when you're looking in the Old Testament. We're just another one of the Gentile nations. And so of, of all of them across the globe that are not Israel. And so, but there is an interesting verse here, and that's where it says uh, in verse 13, Shedan, Dedan, which would be Saudi and Arabia, and all of the Sunni Muslim countries like Jordan and, and Qatar and nations like that, the Arab Emirates, okay, with them, and then the merchants of Tarshish, which could either be Spain, but most likely England or the UK, and all their young lions will say to you, have you come to take plunder? Have you gathered your army to take booty to carry away silver and so on? This is the only place in the Bible that I can say with any possible confidence there might be a mention of the United States. Because if Tarsus, and that's a big if, is the United Kingdom, then we would be one of their young lions being an offshoot of the British Empire. And so, and of course, we're not involved in this at all. Uh, who knows what could happen? You know, this is obviously, we're making a declaration to the UN or to this world, like, hey, you know, we're, we're hey, are you really going to do that? But we're not actually going to get involved. And so that is just, if you ever want to know, you hear people say it, that's my, um, my explanation of it here. I could be wrong, but it doesn't really matter because we are not involved in it anyway, and we are not mentioned in Scripture. And so whatever happens to the United States when it comes to the tribulation period is obviously we become, and during the, the last day scenario in the Middle East, we're not involved in it. So whatever happens to our nation, whether we just decide not to get involved or uh, we either get attacked or something happens or we diminish as a, as a country or could be the rapture of the church, lots of different uh, questions, but we're not going to get into it. So... With that said, we see today the reason that this alliance, this, this thing. And so I'm hoping that as you're going through this prophetic timeline every week, that you're starting to gather a good apologetic, um, um, uh, you know, um, just a good view of what the scriptures say about what we see happening. So, you know, it's not crazy to say we can start to see these things happen. But just be careful that because God can do anything. God could hold this off for another 30, 40 years. This could be just, but, but understand that eventually what we do see possibly building up will is uh, pretty close to the scenario that we read about in the scripture. The one thing that we do know, this will happen. And we do know we live in the last days. So my, my, my question to you is, are you ready? And if you're not, you need today to, to just... Take a moment and, 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 and make sure that you're right with God. Because if you are not right with God, then, then you're destined to go into a period of time that is the worst period in the history of humankind. But you don't have to do that if you put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ today. That means you have to repent from your sins. That means you have to turn from them. You have to change your mind, your way of thinking. Confess them to God, but that's not enough. You have to receive Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior. And you can do that today by just crying out to him, asking him to forgive you of all your sins, to come into your life, to change you from the inside out, and you will change, and you will become a new person. And you will also have uh, eternal life and a promise that you won't have to face a lot of the things that are coming. Um, so I hope, I know that went a little long today, but I just wanted to cover all those verses. So God bless you and have a great day. In the name of Jesus. Amen.